Hello! In this video, we're going to learn about basic punctuation together. Let's start. First, we need to understand what punctuation is. Punctuation is a group of symbols. These punctuation marks are used in different ways. So in this video, I'm going to help you understand how we use punctuation marks. Before we start, let me say that punctuation marks do two things. The, one of the things they do is to help express meaning, to show your meaning. Maybe it shows if it's a question or a sentence or if something is shocking and we need a strong voice. Also, punctuation marks help us connect ideas better. When we use commas or periods, it helps us understand the connection between sentences or the connection between words. Punctuation is very important in English. You use punctuation when you read, when you write, even when you speak. And for listening, it's also really important. In this class, we are going to learn five punctuation marks. Yes, there are more punctuation marks, but you will learn those later. Let's start with the first one, the period. The period looks like this. It's just a, a dot, a period. And the period is used to show that a sentence is finished. So it's to show a full stop, to stop the sentence. So let's take a look at some examples. I need to study at home to improve my English. This is one sentence. And if you listen to me read it, I need to study at home to improve my English. I stop after English because I have this period here. If I didn't have the period and it continues, then I continue to read my sentence. The period tells me stop. And when there's a stop, it usually means that I stop for maybe one or two seconds before I continue to read out loud. Let's look at the second example. The English language has many punctuation rules. Again, after rules, you hear me stop. This is because of the period. So you need to remember to use a period at the end of your sentences because that means that the reader will know this idea finished. So I need to stop after this sentence. Okay, now let's take a look at the second punctuation mark. The second punctuation mark is the question mark, and it looks like this. And this is used for questions. So just like you use a period for sentences, you use a question mark for questions. How are you today? Question mark. You finished with the question mark. Did you finish your homework? Is the teacher friendly? So you can see from these three examples that because these are questions, I need to finish the question with a question mark, not a period. Okay. Number three, the exclamation point. This is one of my favorite punctuation marks because in with this punctuation mark, we show a strong feeling, good feelings or bad feelings. For example, when you're angry and you say something strong, you use a, an exclamation point. Or maybe you are scared or shocked or happy and you want to show a strong feeling, this is when you use an exclamation point. So in my examples, when you, for example, go to a wedding and you want to say congratulations and you want to show that you are, have a strong feeling, you use an exclamation point when you're writing and when you read it, you have a stronger voice. Be careful. Don't cheat on tests. These are really good examples of how you can use exclamation points. Number four on our list is the apostrophe. The apostrophe looks like this, and we use it in two different ways. 
The first way we use the apostrophe is to show possession. Possession means it belongs to me or belongs to you. The second way we use apostrophes is to contract, to make words connected and shorter. Do we basically take a long word or maybe two words and we connect them with the apostrophe. So let's look at the examples here below. Danitza's house is in Oakland. Look at the apostrophe with my name, Danitza's. This is basically the same as saying her house is in Oakland. So when I say Danitza's house, the house belongs to me. So that's why I use the apostrophe. And the second way we use apostrophes is remember to make something that's long get short. So for example, good students don't cheat on tests. Here you see don't and you see this apostrophe for the contraction because it's the short version. The long way is do not. So do not, two words, we can put them together, squeeze it together with the apostrophe and use don't. The last punctuation mark we're going to study in this video is the comma. The comma. The comma looks similar to the apostrophe, but the apostrophe is up. The comma is on the bottom. And the comma also has two ways to be used. The first way is when you have a list, a list of more than three items, more than three things. If you have two, you don't need a comma. If you have three, you need a comma. If you have four, five, six, seven, you need a comma. The second way is to connect two sentences, to complete sentences. So let's look at some examples. Here, I'm going to show you examples of how you use the comma when you have a list of more than three items. For example, when you have three subjects or more, Julia, Kim, and Frank, are great students. The commas here, you put a comma after the first one, comma after the second, and then you use and before the last item. So this, when I hear it, the comma is a pause. It's like one second pause, not a stop, a pause. So listen again, Julia, Kim, and Frank are great students. You can have a list of subjects. You can have a list of verbs. For example, James studies, exercises, and relaxes on Sunday. Or you can have a list of objects. Students need to buy books, pencils, and paper for class. So I want to show you different examples here so that you understand the comma is used in any type of list. As long as you have more than two things on your list, you need to use a comma. And remember, when you use a comma when you're speaking, it's a very short pause. The second way we use the comma is to connect two complete sentences together. Usually, you need to have a conjunction, and, but, so. So let's look at some examples. Julio is a student at Laney College and Jessica is a student at BCC. So the first part, Julio is a student at Laney College is a complete sentence. Jessica is a student at BCC. So we are connecting these two with a comma and and right here. The second example uses a different conjunction, but we still need a comma because we have two complete sentences and we're putting them together. I don't have class tomorrow, but I will study at home. Listen again, when I use the comma, I take a pause. It helps me breathe so I can continue to speak. I don't have class tomorrow, but I will study at home. So in this video, we learned five different punctuation marks. Pause the video here to review one more time how and when we use these punctuation marks. Now that you understand the five different punctuation marks, 
please make sure that you use them in your writing. And when you are reading, try to learn from the reading material. Pay attention to how these five punctuation marks are used. Thank you for watching.